Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video. In this video, I would like to talk and share my experience with C++. Now C++ is definitely one of the most versatile and powerful and of course very fast programming language. But over the internet, it's usually being underselled. Now I would like to discuss my journey of C++ as well as talk about the experience which about one of my class, I have just finished up a class about backend development using C++, so I would like to share my experience. This video is going to help you to understand what you can expect with C++, what you can build with C++, and what kind of job you can expect with C++. So let's get started. First and foremost, this video can be a little bit longer because I would like to share the entire experience of my class as well as personal experience of working with C++. And usually these videos sometimes are a little bit longer in the time because if I'll put a time constraint on that like 5 minutes or 6 minutes, it can be a little bit longer. So these kinds of precise videos where we have to cover some of the special topic or something that goes on on the screen, screencast or something. So let's forget about the time zone and let's explore the C++ world. First, let's accept the fact that C++ is not one of the most popular programming language. Usually the popular chart is being taken up by languages like JavaScript or Python or Java or usually these famous languages. But don't get me wrong here, C++ is definitely not the popular language but still is one of the most powerful and underlying language. For most of the frameworks that you work around, they are somehow being interacted or being touched by the C++. For example, Flutter is one of the most uh, famous and getting popularity kind of a framework. Underlying under the hood, they are interacted quite a lot by C++ programming. And usually when I talk with the students about C++, all they come up with, it's an academic language and if somebody who is much more interested in that always says, I want to do game development with C++. Yes, it's a truth that C++ can be used for game development, but that would be really an underselling of C++. C++ is very powerful and can do a lot of things, but usually what happens, people don't know how to get started with C++ and building up those projects as well. Usually the best they can come up with is the game development. No, it's not like that. C++ is completely capable even of interacting with the modern web applications that uses MongoDB, Heroku or Docker and all these things. Of course, in the popularity chart, this language you will not see most, most of the YouTubers or other people who are social media influencers talking about this language. The reason is pretty simple because this language usually comes up from the academic side and, side and people who are uh, doing their engineering or masters or PhD usually get in touch with these languages and on the internet most of the people are uh, those who are influencers and who are pretty good and solid in the technology uh, but they don't have that kind of educational background. I'm not saying it's wrong it's totally fine uh, but usually this language definitely has a heavier side on academic world okay so let me talk about my experience with C++ now I haven't talked about this on camera uh, before this but let me walk you through so I was initially a Python guy and still I am mostly and in the earlier days of the college I wrote a ton of scripts in Python usually for pen testing stuff and our, for our company which we want to automate some of the stuff stuff like that now in my masters, uh, I had to do a project on NS3, which is a network simulator, in which you can simulate like you need a hundred computer simulation or how your Wi-Fi is going to perform while you have a concrete block or you have a water body uh, inside the signals, uh, stuff like that. So in that NS3 world, I had to work on uh, some of the project. I chose Python naively because I wanted to do everything with just one language, which was, which was my favorite, happened to be Python. And usually that's okay, usually beginners do that a lot, that they learn just one language and do want to do everything in just one language. I did the same mistake, I accept that now, it was a naive move. So I tried uh, Python because I saw that NS3 is compatible with Python and we did wrote down our initial scripts of the project in that and realized that Python is not suitable for it. It's terribly slowing us, our performance of our program, compilation and all these stuff. So Python was not at all a good suit or good need for that particular project and realized, hey, we need to jump now into C++. 
To be honest, I didn't like it. I didn't like that C++, we are using C++ because the syntax is very verbose and coming up from a world of Python uh, where you don't have that much of verbose syntax, everything is abstracted into layer. You don't declare data types and stuff. The loops are pretty easier. There are no brackets. So it is very like abstraction layer is there. On the other hand, C++, it's very verbose. There is no abstraction layer. You even declare your headers, your data types, everything is just in front of you. Too much of the code is there. So we realized that, but of course we also realized after a few uh, lines of codes and stuff we did on the project that yes, this language is ridiculously fast and, and we had to use it. So that was my very first interaction uh, of the C++ with NS3. Now let's talk about uh, my recent class on C++. So a few students approached me that, hey, we want to learn about C++ and web development with that, and they were ready to pay my fees as well. So I thought, hey, it would be good exposure that I haven't touched C++ in a while, so I would like to explore that again. I, I said that, hey, give me a week. I would like to first do all these tests and your project work on my own. Once I'm done with it, I have prepared everything, then I would like to teach you because obviously that's a good thing to teach. First prepare it on yourself and then do it. Don't do it just like on the live world. First prepare because you are teaching something, it's not experimentation there. So the project goal was really simple, it was just a minor project. We wanted to use C++ in the back end. And with the C++, the biggest issue when you use it on such something like web application, uh, the goal was really simple, we want to have a C++ back end and it should throw a JSON response so that we can have our own customized API. And these API can be used for iOS, Android, and web application. Pretty simple, not a big deal. Can be done with the Node.js, can be done with the PHP. But for this project, we uh, students actually wanted to do it with the C++. Now, the biggest challenge in front of us was uh, C++, obviously. Uh, this was not a course or a project about learning loops or function with that. We want to implement that. Now the biggest issue is first and foremost is the development as well as deployment because there are some libraries in C++ which you install at the development side. If they are not exactly those versions are not present on the deployment side, everything is going to be going into crash and you won't be able to see much of the errors, you won't be able to resolve that. So that's one of the biggest issues that the same chain, uh, the tool set chain that you are using here, it should be there as well. So we decided that we are going to be using Docker for that because DevOps technology actually helps in resolving the exact same kind of error. So we thought we will be using Docker for that. Now in case you want to use exactly same Docker that I have used in this technology, it's simply available uh, by a command docker space pull space Hitesh Chaudhary slash hello underscore Chrome. So that was done that we now are going to be using C++. Now the library that we chose that will be doing majority of our work is going to be libboost. If you have worked any time in the C++, you know that the standard template libraries are pretty powerful. Apart from that, one third party libraries which everybody likes to use is libboost. I'll link down uh, libboost in the description section so that you can explore it more in case you have more interest in that. Now further, the next thing is to find out a lightweight framework that can help us in doing majority of work. Obviously, we don't want to write everything from the scratch, so that's why we were looking to choose up a simple framework like that. Now in case you have been into the touch of C++ for a while, you know that there is a framework known as Crow. Now Crow is like, if I had to tell you exactly what it is, it would be like a flask of the Python or Django in the Python. Exact same kind of concept is there in the C++ that is known as Crow. So Crow is pretty uh, useful, not well documented, I will be honest here. Uh, but definitely this was our choice that we wanted to go with that. So we solved our few problems like we will be using Docker and we will be using Heroku to push all these things. We will be using Crow as our main uh, framework for dealing up rest of the things. There is one big issue that we faced in building up this class and this entire project uh, was having the driver issues. Now we wanted to have MongoDB in our application. Surely we could have MySQL, that would again be a great choice, but student wanted to have a MongoDB. I said no issues, we can deal up with that as well. Now the biggest issue is when you are using frameworks which are so just core level, like C++, Crow, uh, it's not like you can just import any middleware just like you do in the Node.js and you can work on with that, that's not possible. So what we had to do is uh, we went onto the GitHub of MongoDB and we needed to download the drivers of that into the core language and then have to build it up. 
So getting into the driver level is something which is nightmare and all the programmers might want to skip that. And that's okay, that's totally obvious. I even wanted to skip that part, but we had no choice. So go, we went on to the uh, development side, uh, the GitHub side of the MongoDB. We downloaded that driver and again, these drivers were in C, so they need to be compiled up again into C++ as well. So this is what we did after that. And after that, the things were super easy. There was nothing which was groundbreaking. We were able to interact with the MongoDB pretty easily. And after that, you can just uh, add on things into your uh, MongoDB. It was just like a CRUD operation for MongoDB, nothing of a big deal. But yes, uh, the knowledge of these things, like Crow is definitely not a popular one. So you need somebody who is a little bit friendly with the Crow or even friendly in the reading the documentation. That was the tough part. And again, uh, these compilation of the drivers from C to C++ using MongoDB and stuff, that was also another nightmare. So yes, of course, uh, I would say that this could have been done easily with other tech specs, but sometimes it is important that you go with the hard way. And of course, performance wise, of course, this application is going to perform ridiculously fast. It's interacting directly with C++. So yes, that was my brief uh, exploration of C++. And I think the video is getting pretty much longer and pretty much nerdy here. Uh, definitely do let me know in the comment section below and I would definitely like to make another video about Crow so that more people can get uh, knowledge about that. Yes, these kinds of framework do exist in other languages and I will talk about that in the upcoming video. So yeah, this was a little bit nerdy, a little bit boring as well. I would give you on that. Uh, but definitely I wanted to share this experience so that it's, this can be out on the internet and everybody gets that C++ is not just about game development. It can do a lot more than that. I would like to talk about uh, this experience continued in the part two of this video. If you need that, let me know in the comment section below. And of course, one more thing, I am getting super crazy about these stories uh, nowadays. I'm posting a ton of them on my Instagram, started to post them on, on this YouTube as well. So uh, in case you don't like it, you can ignore it. But in case you want to follow up all these things, uh, join me up on Instagram and I would definitely love to join you back as well. So that's it for this video and in case you enjoyed it, do share it with your friends who says that C++ is just a boring language. No, it's not. It's very powerful. It can do a ton of things. So share it with those friends and of course, don't forget to share it with your college or university teachers as well so that they can also learn how to make C++ interesting. That's it for this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll surely catch you up in the next video. Distracted, subconscious, overloaded Careful, don't pull the